In this video, I'm going to go over a procedure for solving the diffusion equation, uh, and I'm going to cover a number of different cases. First, we'll always be working with the diffusion equation. Partial derivative of u with respect to time is equal to the diffusion coefficient multiplied by second derivative of this unknown function with respect to space. So we generally are going to be working with an initial condition. So that is the state of the system at t equals zero. So u of x and zero is specified by some function. And in addition to an initial condition, we always work with boundary conditions. Now, boundary conditions can come in a number of varieties. Uh, there are what's called Dirichlet boundary conditions, Neumann boundary conditions, and mixed boundary conditions, which are a combination of the two. And there's two different types that I'm going to refer to here. So the first condition, the Dirichlet boundary condition, in this case, you're given the value of the function at the boundaries. So here's an example where we have the value of the function at u equals zero, at x equals zero is zero, and at x equal l is also zero. A Neumann boundary condition tells us the slope of the function at the endpoints of the interval. And so in this case, again, we have the slope at zero and the slope at l are both given by zero. And then the mixed conditions are where we mix and match these. So we take a value at zero and a slope at L, for example, that's one type of mixed. And so here you see value of the solution U at X equals zero is zero and the slope of U at X equal L is zero. Or we can swap it the other way and say, let's specify the slope at X equals zero to be zero and the value of the function to be zero at L. So these all are called homogeneous boundary conditions because they all include zeros. Um, and so this will be a slightly simpler situation, but let's talk about the full general problem, which can complicate things a bit, in which the boundary conditions are not necessarily equal to zero. So for example, here we have a Dirichlet condition but it's got an A and a B, where A and B might not necessarily be zero. Here we have a Neumann condition, where we specify the value of the function slope at the endpoints to be C and D, and so on. We can do the same for the mixed conditions, just replacing the zeros by non-zero values. And these boundary conditions are called non-homogeneous. So the procedure for uh, solving the diffusion equation with an initial condition and any one of these boundary conditions uh, follows a similar set of uh, procedures or a similar set of steps. So the first step is to find the steady state solution. For the homogeneous type of boundary conditions, the steady state solution will either be a zero or constant solution. But in general, when you have non-homogeneous boundary conditions, the most general steady state you could have for the diffusion equation is uh, a, a straight line. So the u steady state of x, and the steady state will only be a function of x because there's no time dependence in the steady state for the heat equation, um, is c1x plus c2. So you can see that this is what would happen if you were to uh, set the u sub t in this equation equal to zero, which is what you do when you're looking for a steady state. And we would find the solutions to u at x, x equals zero. Well, if the second derivative is zero, we must be dealing with a straight line. Okay, so the next step uh, in this procedure is to determine the eigenfunctions. And we do this by considering the boundary conditions. So for example, with Dirichlet, homogeneous Dirichlet boundary conditions, actually for Dirichlet homogeneous or non-homogeneous Dirichlet conditions, uh, the eigenfunctions are e to the lambda t sine of n pi x over l, where lambda is a slightly complicated expression, but it's basically minus n squared pi squared over l squared multiplied by d. Um, if you're in the Neumann case, then the eigenfunctions involve cosines, because the cosine function has zero slopes at the endpoints. And if you're in the mixed conditions, uh, for example, this first one, you want a zero value at the origin and a zero slope at L. And so you would work with the sine of n pi x over 2L. 
And if you're in this type of mixed condition, you would work with the cosine of n pi x over 2l. So these will be the eigenfunctions, and we're going to use those to represent our initial condition uh, as a Fourier series. But it's a little bit more subtlety than just straight calculating the Fourier series for f. So the third step is to subtract off the steady state from that initial condition. So when we subtract it off, I'm going to give it a new name. g of x is this new function that I get by taking f of x minus the steady state. Once you've subtracted off the steady state to get this new function g of x, the fourth step is to write g of x as a Fourier series in terms of those eigenfunctions. And so then we can find the Fourier coefficients for g of x with these particular eigenfunctions as determined by the boundary conditions. Finally, the fifth step is to, once we have these Fourier coefficients, we can just write down the solution u of xt as the steady state plus a sum of eigenfunctions with e to the lambda t's stuck in front appropriately, and these coefficients are the ones that we've calculated for the Fourier series of g of x. And why we do that? Because when you plug in t equals zero here, you want to make sure that you get a Fourier series that converges to uh, g of x. So then when we add back the steady state, this whole expression is equal to f of x, the initial condition. And that is the overall procedure for solving the diffusion equation subject to an initial condition and any one of these types of boundary conditions.